So at the end of September 2024, iron and steel making came to an end here in Port Albert Steelworks. And one of the processes that came to an end was the continuous casting from liquid steel. But actually, it was only paused because in the future, when electric arc furnished steel making comes to Port Albert, the castles will be back up and running and we'll be using those to produce the slabs to make steel for the downstream processes. So we've come along to the casters to see what's happened since uh, the end of September because there's quite a lot going on here and quite a lot of different changes. Um, pleased to be joined by Rob Deeney. Rob, you are our operations manager here for the casters. Three continuous casters in Port Albert. One uh, just behind us here, two and then three. Uh, different things happening to different casters. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, that's right, Tim. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, yeah, so, like you say, uh, in September, and early before September, uh, we went into um, cessation on Caster 2. Um, business made a decision uh, that Caster 2 is probably no, no longer needed uh, in, the, in the new world or future worlds. Um, so we decided to decommission the Caster. Um, Caster 2 is completely decommissioned now, and that's everything from uh, cables being cut uh, pipes being cut, all services disconnected, uh, etc. So uh, we're in the process uh, next week now of sort of handing Caster 2 back to the business in a, in a decommissioned state. So it's a it's a key milestone uh, for the for the area. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of work that's gone into into that, and uh, and the team have worked tirelessly to to put us into a really good position um, and get that Caster decommissioned. So yeah. we'll be looking to hand that back uh, at the end of this uh, calendar year. But it's slightly different for Caster 1 and 3. Like you say, there's, um, there's uh, an opportunity for us to um, invest in Caster 1 and 3. Uh, we've got different programs uh, from a CapEx program to a back on spec program uh, and also uh, a Keep Safe team. Um, so currently now today, uh, my Keep Safe team are looking at how do we do the ongoing maintenance on the Caster plus also incorporate the CapEx project and the back on spec project. So yeah. it's quite a complex process, Tim, mm -hmm. uh, on how we're going to do it over the next three years. But we're in the initial stages now of understanding how we, how we sort of link and amalgamate all these different aspects together uh, yeah. from a project and trying to keep the asset, uh, keep it safe as well. So Yeah, because I know there's a big piece of money going to be spent here on the casters, and quite rightly, because the whole of the uh, future of the steel business is going to come through <laughs> through the casters. And... You know, it's not often you get up this close to the casters. And I know Caster 1 here, we can see the turret behind us. Uh, and we can look down into the pit and see where, where the casting happens, I guess. Uh, tell us a bit about what's happening on Caster 1. And then tell us a bit about what's happening on Caster 3. Yeah, so um, we've, we've had a CapEx team uh, working in the area for about two years now. Um, they've gone through a real stringent fell process, uh, which, is, which has gone down well uh, with the business. Um, but everything from, if you look, look behind this, we talk about the turret on Caster 1, she's 42 years old now, but she's having uh, new saddle bearings, new um, rot rotary bearings. Uh, when you look down in the machine, we're having new uh, mould tables, new backbones. And then when you go th out the machine, then there's, there's a lot of structural work being done where, you, where you're standing out, Tim. Yeah. Uh, the, new, the beams are being changed, etc. cetera. Um, there's a lot of uh, process control um, tasks being done as well so a lot of the uh, the IO drops some of the PLCs are being changed so there's there's a lot going on from a mechanical and electrical perspective yeah. but we've got to make sure that uh, other parts of this asset come come back in in 2027 as well yeah. Caster 3 is very similar as you can imagine Caster 3 is 20 years old now Caster 1 is 42 years old there's a lot of obsolescence within the Caster as well which we've got to engineer out uh, which the CapEx team and my mothball team are working closely together to understand, making sure that we get this, these assets as reliable as we can for when the EF starts up in 27. So. Yeah, and we can see some of the work started already in terms of kind of dismantling stuff. And uh, But that sounds like a hell of a lot of work, and it's got to be ready by the time the electric cart furnace is up and running. Uh, and, you know, there's going to be a lot of people working on this. How confident are you that you've got three years to finish it, that, it's, uh, that, that that's a piece of work that's all doable? It's a challenge, yeah, I think. We're currently... Um, putting the, them organisations together yeah. uh, and setting the expectation and onboarding uh, both the CapEx team and the Mothball team to understand how they work closely together. Um, it will be a challenge, yeah? But I think we've, we've got the right organisation and the right people in the organisation to, to make this a success over the next next years, if I'm on to, Tim. So it's exciting. Yeah. And it's good to hear about it because people talk about 
decarbonizing the UK steel industry. Everyone's talking about the electric arc furnace, but no one's talking about some of the other major pieces of work that are going on. You know, you've got this work here in Acastas. The hot mill's also going to have a piece of work on it, a brand new pickle line, you know, further down the line. Difficult period as people leave the business, of course, in steel and slab over, over recent months and coming over the next few months. But are people starting to get excited about this place having a new lease of life? 100%. I th- to say it's been a challenge over the last six to 12 months has been an understatement. Mm-hmm. I think it, it pulls on every emotion from the excitement of the sign off the AF to the difficulty of seeing a lot of people leaving the organisation, which, which which you call your friends as well. Yeah. You know, we, I, I've worked in this department for 20 years and seeing people go, it, it's difficult. Um, but then there's a point then where we, we, where we start looking to the future uh, and understanding it's bright. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. Yeah. Uh, and um, I think it's going to be interesting over the next few years and I think we, from a legacy perspective we're going to set put Albert up for the next 10, 20 years and, and some of the stuff we're going to do over the next three, three years like you say it, it feels like a lot of these mini projects are, are being shadowed by the EAF but like you say this is as important as the EAF same as the coal, same, same as the coal mill same as the pickle line we've got to get we've got to get the right people um, invest in, in the um, in the people who are doing these jobs because the people who are, who are going to bring in these assets back um, to a more reliable position are probably going to be the ones we want to, to run the plant as well yeah. so yeah. so it's going to be an extremely interesting three years Tim if I'm honest yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much for bringing us down Rob listen you know as Rob said this is just as important as electric art furnace you know you can't have one without the other and it is difficult to demonstrate uh, without actually being here. And even on camera, I'm not sure you'll understand the size of these things. But, you know, this turret is holding ladles that hold 300 tonnes of liquid steel. And these are absolutely massive. This is engineering on a gigantic scale. And the, the amount of work that has to go on here is phenomenal. And uh, good luck to you and your team, Rob, for doing it. Because I can see uh, firsthand what's in front of you. And it's critically important. And so... You know, strength to your elbow for getting through that. You know, you've got a few years ahead of you. And uh, listen, we'll come back and see how it goes. But for the time being, thanks for bringing us down and showing us up close. It's, uh, it's a hell of a challenge you've got ahead of you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Thank you Rob.